Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I am going to do a coaching with Vicky, which is a monthly Q&A where I would pick some of the top questions that I wanted to go through more in depth on YouTube. If you are excited as much as I am, let's get started. Wait, but first, I kind of wanted to change my outfit because I think Halloween's coming. Let's just change it, shall we? Ta-da! Much better. This is definitely one of my favorite um, characters on Street Fighter because she's such a badass and I love badass women who can just put their shit together and who can actually be super independent and just beat up men like crazy. Anyways, so happy Halloween everyone. Um, just wanted to try out my outfit and I hope that you like this outfit. So the first question is how to know what to learn after learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I know that from a lot of the roadmaps for web development, they recommend you to um, jump into frameworks like React, Vue, or Angular. Um, in my opinions, I don't recommend to right away jump into frameworks. I actually recommend to start building some projects with vanilla JavaScript with HTML and CSS first. Um, the first thing that come up in my mind is really thinking about building a static site because a static site doesn't really need a backend to support that. So what I would recommend is start trying to build a static website either for your family or for your friends who need you know, a really simple website. They're really good practice for you to really get familiar with HTML, CSS and how to get some really cool animations on your site and also practice on advanced CSS. Or even if you are going to use a CSS framework, this would be a really good idea for you to actually start looking at that. Start building a few projects, um, very small little projects, before you jumping into framework. And if you are looking for some project ideas that I wanted to build with just vanilla JavaScript, um, I've got a video that has a ton of project ideas that can help you to think about what kind of projects that I wanted to build to practice, especially for beginners. Make sure that you go check out the video over here and um, take a look at those project ideas. The second question is, what do you think of learning jQuery for web development? So jQuery is a framework or a library for um, vanilla JavaScript. So instead of writing vanilla JavaScript, say if you wanted to write something like document.currySelector, um, selecting certain things and moving around in the DOM, a lot of the developers in the past would use um, a library slash framework, however you want to call it, as jQuery. It has been very popular in the past. It definitely has a large community that is supporting jQuery. So I think the bottom line is jQuery is important to know if you came across a opportunity for you to learn it. But it's not really necessary to learn if you are still trying to learn so many other things, right, in web development. So that's my takeaway. Also know that there's a lot of freelancing opportunities with jQuery just by the fact that there's a lot of the frameworks and a lot of the um, older applications were built out with jQuery. So for you to look for job opportunities and for you to actually look into the code base of some other companies' um, old legacy code or even some other companies' work, it's, it's a good thing to know because it's helping you to understand other people's code. And it's also helping you to learn a lot more things that are relating to web development. The next question is, what would you suggest to a CS college students before graduating? So like the do's and the don'ts. Very good question. I wish that I have a mentor when I was in school. Unfortunately, I wasn't in school for computer science, so I didn't really get all the mentorship and all the opportunities to know the things that you can do or cannot do. For someone who is already in the field and giving you advice and suggestions to um, get into the field, um, I would say that before you graduating, you want it to um, really start thinking about community building. And this is something that I talk a lot 
in my channel where I think it's really important to connect with people in the community especially um, tech is a really tight community we help out each other um, I think it's important to come up with some communities that you wanted to be part of and start joining a lot of these um, online conferences or even you know online meetups and start connecting with other people at them on LinkedIn I think it's really important to create a social presence for yourself as a developer writing blog posts about tech talking about tech sharing things that you learn along a journey the more people that you know in the field the easier it's gonna get you a internship or even a job so you definitely wanted to build up your community as soon as fast as possible the don'ts i would say that don't hung up on just one particular language there's always going to be new um, theories and new ways of solving problems so you wanted to make sure that you're constantly learning you make sure that you are always having an open mind and adapting to newer things and trying newer things and trying newer tools never stop learning and never keep your mind closed always have an open mind and always um, wonder and be curious ex excited about um, building greater tools for the community for the humankind one of the important things that i think it's gonna help you a lot when you're graduating is start thinking about your interview obviously practicing on algorithms and practicing on your communication skills and being able to communicate technically to another technical recruiter a lot of times it's easy for us to solve a problem in our head but it's not that easy to actually communicate where you get stuck or what your thought process is um, to another human being why you're still trying to figure things out along the way right so make sure that you're starting getting into that momentum of practicing this is really loud the city noise is always super 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 loud Okay, so the noise is gone. Sorry about that. And if you are almost graduating, wow, congratulations. It's it's not easy. A lot of the students who are in computer science, um, it's not an easy journey to go through. I have a cousin who is in software engineering currently in California, and he's been telling me stories about being a student and how hard that is and how competitive this field has become um, so bravo to you if you are graduating very soon you have a whole world waiting for you you know the world is your oyster congrats so a lot of questions that are related to interviews and internships and etc so this question is how do you get an internship opportunities when you don't have a lot of work experience or you don't have any work experience a lot of times um, big tech companies would have a lot of um, internship opportunities and I know usually those ones are like super competitive you know it's like 3,000 people applying for maybe 10 internship positions and they're definitely very competitive don't feel bad if you didn't get into those internship opportunities I think that internship is a stepping stone for you to get into engineering or get into tech companies they're not expecting you to have a lot of experience it's literally a way for you to have some experience in this field right in order to stand out in amongst other applicants is the idea of really having that passion um, so really enjoying coding and really demonstrate different activities that you do um, to be part of this community is really important and as early as I mentioned that it's really important to have a community building um, so there are a few ways that you can demonstrate your passion obviously you can create your personal projects second thing is doing open source contribution you're helping the community you are reading a large scales of code bases and you're being able to comprehend that and it's important to demonstrate that to the recruiter start writing blog posts and having your opinions about technology forming your own opinions about different stacks and different languages when i was job hunting i got a lot of recruiters reach out to me because i wrote articles about big old notations or i wrote articles about other stuff that are engineering related being able to talk about technology and geek out and um, being part of it you know going to hackathons and doing all kinds of stuff really demonstrate your passion in this field and recruiters are gonna see that that would be like literally one of my biggest tips for you to get an internship um, it's that passion 
that fire like let it out let the little nerd inside of you out <laughs> okay so the next question is is cracking the coding interview book worth studying on it or is it overrated this book is so called the holy bible of interviews it covers all different types of interview questions that you're gonna encounter um, when you're trying to get a job as a software engineer and it also gives you some in-depth solutions and problems relating to technical interviews and how you can tackle those the book is really thick it was like this much um, I've got another video that I dive into how exactly are you gonna use this book what kind of chapters that you should be focusing on to help you to ace your interview so if you're interested on that video just a heads up click somewhere here my thought about this book is that you cannot just keep on reading solutions and reading problems and thinking I can be really good on interviews this book is supposed to guide you it's supposed to be like a textbook for you to actually be aware of what's going on and how many strategies you can use to solve all these interview questions but they are not the type of books that is going to level you up if you don't practice so i want to focus on practice 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 you cannot be good at interviews if you don't apply for any jobs and you're not getting any interviews you're not getting any calls so you have to start putting yourself in a position of interviewing talking to recruiters going through different technical interviews to be better at interviews it's not gonna be a book or a magic pill is just gonna get you the job like if you don't put in the work you're not gonna get the job so make sure that you putting in your work get it done okay just brr, be tough and Perfect. punch the interviewer on the face no I'm just kidding I just want to say thank you thank you thank you so much for joining me today for a monthly Q&A make sure that you are sharing this video like and subscribe and you are not done yet I have another video for you to watch next is my previous Q&A question video um, if you're interested in more questions that was asked by people in this community go check out that video if you are interested and looking for projects to build so then you can get hired i've got another video over here that you can check it out make sure that you stay safe and healthy and good and all that stuff okay okay bye bye